Have you ever heard the phrase control the controllables, which basically means focus on the things that you can actually control? Well, at the moment, there's a lot of people focusing on things they can't control, like house prices, like mortgage rates, whether or not the housing market is going to crash, which it's not. And in turn, they result to either making videos about a crash or talking about why you should not buy a home because of what's going to happen in the future. But here's the thing, all of that stuff is absolute garbage and ultimately doesn't benefit you in any way at all. And that's exactly why I wanna take some time here, not to convince you to buy a house, but to talk about the times when you should consider buying versus the times when you should consider waiting. It's not always a great time to buy a house. And we're actually gonna talk about the times when you should wait. But what you shouldn't do is give all your time, effort, energy into watching others to talk about all this craziness that's gonna happen in the market that's going to lead to this next massive down leg in the housing market. I actually had someone reach out to me recently and said, Jeb, give me one good reason I should buy a house. House prices are at all time highs. Interest rates are the highest that we've seen them in months while housing affordability is still sitting near all time low. So why should I buy a home versus rent? And while there are some things that we're gonna talk about here in just a minute when you should absolutely consider renting versus buying, the number one reason to buy a house is so that you can fix, so that you can stabilize your housing costs and ultimately avoid those rent creases over time. And the main reason for that is because the earlier that you can fix your housing costs, the lower that component is going to be to your overall budget. And the main reason for that is because over time, you continue to make more money. You climb the corporate ladder or whatever ladder it is you're trying to climb. So over time, your income should continue to increase. So the earlier you can fix that cost relative to your current budget, the lower it's going to be over time as your budget continues to increase. And all the while that's happening, you have the potential to maybe take advantage of lower rates in the future, which means that housing cost is going to go down even more. And at the same time, you're paying down the principal balance on that mortgage while gaining appreciation during that same period of time. Now, I don't wanna come out and make it sound like it's all rosy. Home prices don't necessarily appreciate every single year. And there's the chance that you start paying down the principal balance and the value of your home actually comes down. So you don't have as much equity in that property. But here's what I do know, real estate continues to appreciate over time. So as long as you have that longer term time horizon, you're likely going to be in a much better position over the long term. Now I started today's video by telling you to focus on the things that you can control. Well, the number one thing you can control in today's video is hitting that thumbs up if you find any value in my videos at all. And on top of that, another thing that you can control is hitting that subscribe button if you want to stay updated on information like this. But in all seriousness, when I'm talking about focusing on the things that you can control, I'm primarily talking about things like your budget, things like your down payment, as well as your credit score. Your credit score impacts your monthly payment more so than anything else. And not only does it impact your monthly payment when it comes to buying a home, but it also impacts your monthly payment when you go to buy a car or you're getting a credit card or maybe you're taking out some other type of debt. Your credit score has the biggest impact on the terms that you're actually getting. So if you're in a position at the moment where housing prices are maybe a little bit too expensive, you can't really afford the type of home that you want to buy, well, spend this time right now to focus on your credit. How can you improve your credit score? How can you raise your credit to the top tier so that when an opportunity does present itself, when the right house comes on the market, you're in the best position to get the best terms available. And oftentimes that can mean taking some of the money that you might be using towards a down payment. So maybe instead of putting 20% down on a home, you put 10% down and you use that additional 10% that you were going to use for the home to pay off debt that could potentially help raise your credit score and not only improve the terms of your loan, but also allow you to purchase more home. Now, if that's something you're thinking about doing, don't just go out there and do that on your own. Make sure you're talking with a lender, someone that's knowledgeable, someone that's reputable, someone that understands the finances of the whole thing and can help walk you through what makes sense in the process. You don't wanna just start paying off debt because sometimes paying off debt can actually lower your credit score in some ways. So you wanna make sure if you're going to do it, you do it in a strategic way. Now, another thing you can control outside of your credit score and your down payment is your budget. And you're probably watching this going, Jeb, why do I need a budget? I have a budget. Well, do you have a budget that's actually written down when it comes to buying a home? Do you know how much you can afford based on all of your monthly expenses? What I will say, in 20 years of doing this, most home buyers don't have a budget at all. 
Instead, what they do is they decide they want to go buy a home. They talk to a lender. A lender analyzes everything and said, hey, this is how much you can afford based off your debt to income ratio, based off the calculations that I'm doing. And what I typically see is home buyers go and say, well, I'm qualified for 500,000. I guess I can go buy a $500,000 home without actually looking at their budget to determine whether or not they can afford a $500,000 home. Because one thing to understand is when a lender is analyzing your debt to income ratio, they're only taking into account the things that show up on your credit report. Things like your credit cards, things like your car payments, your student loans, all of that installment and revolving debt, those are the only things they're really looking at. They're not looking at how much you spend on gas, how much you spend on groceries, how much you spent this last weekend going to Vegas and playing the slots, or how much you spend on date nights or childcare. They're not factoring any of that stuff in. And it's important as a home buyer that you create a budget before you ever have that conversation so that you know exactly where you stand so that you're not putting yourself in a bad position by buying a home. Now, earlier in the video, I mentioned there are some times when you absolutely should not be buying a home. And the number one time, especially in the market that we're in right now, is that if you have a shorter term time horizon, if you're not planning on being in that home for more than five years, I would say seven to 10 is probably ideal, then you probably shouldn't be buying a home in this market unless you plan on keeping it as a rental long term and the numbers actually make sense for that. And the main reason I believe that is because home prices have appreciated so much in such a short period of time that there's a really good chance at some point in the future, we do see home prices flatten out a little bit. There's the chance that we even see them come down. And if you're buying a home with a shorter term time horizon and you're putting little to no money down, well, if home prices stay flat or come down, chances are you're potentially upside down when it goes to sell that home. So you want to make sure you have that longer term time horizon and or have plans to keep that property. In addition to that, you want to make sure that you have job security, that you're at a place in your career where not only are you going to be probably in the same location, but you're going to continue to make money. On top of that, you want to have relationship security. If you're in a relationship right now with someone, you're living together, but you're not really sure it's going to work, well, you probably shouldn't go out and buy a house together. Because let me tell you, buying a house together, if your relationship isn't in order, isn't likely to make your relationship any better. In fact, it's probably going to make it worse. And on that same topic, you want to make sure you have financial stability, not only the money for the down payment, not only the money for the closing costs, but that you have money set aside in case something happens with that property that you need to make repairs. That if something does happen with your career, you have some additional money to continue to make that payment. And that's why it's super important that you're comfortable with that monthly payment. I realize right now with house prices being high, interest rates being higher than they have over the last couple of years, that that payment isn't really attractive, that you don't like that payment. And I can completely understand that. So you might not like the payment, but you have to be comfortable with the payment just in case interest rates don't come down as quickly as you thought. And that's another thing I want to point out. I hear a lot of people over the last couple of years saying, marry the property, date the rate with the idea that interest rates were going to come down automatically. Now, I was one of those people that believed that mortgage rates were going to come down quicker than they have. In fact, I still think interest rates should be lower than they are right now but they haven't come down. But at the same time, I was never one of those people out there saying marry the property and date the rate. And the primary reason for that is you shouldn't be buying a property at the moment if you can only afford it in the future if and when something happens. So if you're buying a home right now with the expectation that interest rates are going to come down and your payment's going to be more affordable, and then you'll be able to afford it. So now you're going to do it anyway and just suck it up for the next three to six months or whatever the time frame you have in your head is, then it probably makes more sense to rent. Now that's not to say that mortgage rates can't come down during that period of time, but as I started the video, focus on the things you can control. You can't control rates. You can control your budget. You can control what you're comfortable with so that you're not setting yourself up for failure in the future. Now at the same time, if you're one of those people waiting because you have some large sum of money coming or your financial position is going to change in the future that's going to make it more advantageous for you to buy then or you're waiting for more favorable conditions or lower mortgage rates and or you just haven't found the right home that's completely okay there's absolutely nothing wrong with waiting in fact dave ramsey says renting is buying you patience until you're ready to buy a home but there is one thing to understand waiting 
can sometime have consequences, which means housing costs could continue to increase, making it more and more expensive to buy a home. On top of that, mortgage rates and or house prices may not decrease. In fact, they could both go up. Now, I don't think that's going to happen, but anything is possible, which means if that does happen, the cost to buy a home is going to be more expensive than it is right now versus buying a home now, if interest rates were to come down, you'd be in a position to take advantage of them, assuming you still had equity in your property and your qualifications to buy a home were still the same. And if you had already purchased and interest rates go up, well, guess what? You're in the best position possible because you took advantage of a lower rate. And as rates come down, you'll be able to take advantage of that in the future, assuming you still meet the guidelines at that time. So instead of sitting here and watching YouTube and all these crash videos and focusing on the things that you can't control, rather focus on the things that we talked about in today's video and ultimately buying when it's the right time in your life.